I'm at the only Goodwill outlet in all of Utah. We're getting a very rare tour of how it all works. We're going to the back. If you've never been to one of these stores, basically how it works is this is just a collection of all the unsold items from all of the Goodwills within the three states around this area. Everything is a dollar and 89 cents a pound or something just cheap like that. In just a second, I'm gonna be going in the employees only section. I've always wanted to know exactly what is happening back there. And now we're gonna find out. My name's Jose. Hi, Jose. The assistant manager here. I came right in the middle of the bin switch, right? Yes, but we're gonna do one just for you. Oh, I love that. <laughs> the vest is mostly for your safety and not so much for the outlet, but for the warehouse. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, okay. Vest it up. This is the outlet. Basically, all the product that you see go through the outlet has come from one of our retail stores. When the stuff doesn't sell at the store level, then it comes down to us here. I would probably say at least 80% of the stuff that you see here has already been sorted through in some sense. Okay. If for whatever reason, which is kind of rare that we do have like an overflow of product and we do dump it here, we always make sure to sort through it first. We have a machine called the tipper. Basically, you put two boxes into the machine and it'll dump it and that's kind of where we get like our first chance to see what's actually in the box. Those boxes that you see right there, we call four by four. Those are the boxes that we get from all 23 stores. That's how they ship it to us. There's so many boxes. How many come here from one store in a given day? More than three or four hundred every day. But when you start dumping them for rotations, then it's really not that many. <laughs> okay. Once the car line, um, have been through a regular Goodwill store and now they've been through the outlet. Um, they come back here to our gondola. Basically what the employees do is they'll go through each and every boat and they'll sort it out into now a smaller category. So after it's been through the store, after it's been through the outlet, we sell it again. Which countries do you ship to the most after stuff is discarded here? Um, I would say probably Pakistan. A lot of our product does go overseas, Africa, parts of Asia. The recycling industry is so much bigger than I think people know, but by us separating it into these smaller categories, it, that's what it gives you the opportunity to recycle 6.4 million pounds, like again. So in total, it's about 7 million that we've kept out of landfill altogether just from our 23 stores from stuff that's been donated from people. This thing right here is called the baler. Um, it's, the correct term is an automated baler. Basically what happens, the same thing, we'll put a boat of textiles in, it'll tip it for us, and the machine, as you can see, it'll, um, the gentleman right there will sort through it and make sure that really the only stuff on the conveyor belt is clothing or linen. It'll go up the conveyor belt and down the chute, and what the baler will do is it'll actually compress it into a belt for us and auto-tie it for us. So they come That's out wild. looking like this. A clothes um, trash compactor. These bad boys are averaged at about 1,050 pounds. They're pretty heavy. Um, they don't look heavy, but they're pretty heavy. Um, and basically the baler will just keep popping them out until we come with the forklift and pretty much stack them up. We actually will load them into these containers right here. And then these containers will go to a port. It'll just get loaded onto a ship and go somewhere else. Goodwill's for profit, but they also donate to different causes. Can you kind of explain that? One of the biggest things that I guess makes us different than the other Goodwills is the Easter Seals Goodwill part. So Easter Seals does a lot of programs. That is what kind of makes us different. Now, some of our locations are smaller than others. Um, so when they do have an overflow of product, we kind of just store it for them. Um, best way that I can describe it is like squirrels storing nuts for the winter. It's a lot of nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen some videos in the past of, and I don't think at this location specifically, but like people like duking it out and like yeah. bikes and pushing and stuff like that. Have you ever had to call the police? Thankfully, it's never been that serious. Okay, good. If for whatever reason, and it happens very rarely, something gets caught by like the same customer and then there's like a disagreement on who saw it first, we just take it out of the sales floor. Just kind of like siblings, you know? Yeah. Nobody gets it. Do you guys ever get like, uh, do you ever get first dibs on anything? No. Or do you have like a rule where you, you're not allowed to Yeah, so stuff? I think sometimes the biggest misconception is that because we work in the back, we get to like look through the stuff first and we get to keep it for ourselves. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Um, we do see some cool stuff that like does come through. 
Um, the only time that you'll see us like sorting through the stuff besides looking for shop, sharp objects and like stuff that shouldn't be in there is um, e-commerce. It's basically like Goodwill's eBay. Um, anything that is really high value will actually get sent to our e-commerce department and sold online. What they'll do is they'll take a picture of it and then they'll post it online. That's like the only time you'll really see us like take anything out, but it's not for ourselves. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, some resellers have told me that you actually take photos of the stuff here. Is yeah. that true? Yes and no. So our e-commerce department is actually based out of Salt Lake. Um, it's actually down the lot. It's not even in the same building. Did you have a question? So we are ready for vacation. Just letting you know how so you can get prepared. We're doing the one at the very end right there. So in this section back here, um, it's actually where we prep the bins prior to them going out to the sales floor. Um, part of the reason that we do put blankets on them, because we get asked all the time, as soon as we say, you guys are good, everyone will go to that one boat. So kind of putting the blanket over it just kind of gives everybody like an even playing field. Nobody knows what's under it. How many bins are being switched out of this rotation? About 30, 30, 32 bins. How many total bins fill this area? I think it's a total of about 72-ish. Wow. If it was my first time coming to the bins, is there a best time to come when I know that there's gonna be like a fresh rotation? Can I like set my watch and be like here at one o'clock right when it happens? Is that a thing? Um, it is and it isn't. When we first open at 9 a.m., the entire floor is brand new. Other than that, I would say probably every hour, hour and a half is when you'll be like the luckiest to get like a rotation. All right, you guys are good. <laughs> what kind of stuff are you guys looking for? Uh, you know, the usual Jinko, Carhartt. Everything. All the vintage, man. What's the best thing that you found at the bins? The best thing I found, I found some Jinko jeans from the 90s. The ones I pulled were like 220. Woo. They were nice. I found a cool Sublime tee from the 90s. Nice. That was pretty cool. Yeah, like I found a 80s Beatles tee. I mean, I resold it for 380 and I got it for like 60 cents. Would you say that the band tee is the most like universally sought after thing here? <laughs> It seems like it. Band tees are really big. Carhartt is really popular also. Vintage Nike. Yeah. It's always really popular, always really looked for. I've noticed there are like the carts on the side and people are kind of like making piles. Basically it's just easier for them to just roam free within the boats um, than to be like hauling the cart around and trying to like get by people. What percentage of the clothes in your closet do you thrift or did you get from right here? All of it, bro. There's a lot. I went to the bins in California. It's way different than here. There's probably better stuff, but it's so much busier. And then there's some bins where like, there's like 10 or 20 people a day where there's like no one there. Yeah. And like, if they saw this many people, they'd be like pissed. Is it usually this busy? Usually it's like half of this, I'd say, during the week. How often have you guys come to the Goodwill bins? It's my first time. First time, let's go. Yeah, it's actually um, her 16th birthday. <laughs> oh, is it? Let's go, happy birthday. And so I brought her, and we're just seeing what it's like. What's the ultimate birthday present that you could find here today? Some Doc Martens. Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> That'd be sweet. Shout out to Anna and Jose for hooking it up today. We enjoyed the special look behind the scenes. It doesn't happen very often. And if you're ready for another video from Tice Tice Baby, it's coming right now.